every restaurant and every menu at Disney California Adventure, this is your ultimate food guide for 2024. So let's get going. We're gonna start right here on Buena Vista Street and first up is Trolley Treats. Trolley Treats is basically your Candy Palace, Pooh Corner, or Marceline Confectionery of Disney California Adventure. It has the same baked goods and snacks for purchase. If we walk right next door, we're gonna come across Clarabelle's Ice Cream. Here you can get regular hand scooped ice cream in a variety of flavors, but the real gem here is their ice cream bars. I've tried a lot of different combos, but the fun is that you can customize it for yourself. Then we have the Fiddler, Pfeiffer, and Practical Cafe. This is your Starbucks location at Disney California Adventure. I couldn't get close enough for a look at the prices, but here's their large seating area for both Starbucks and Clarabelle's. If we step outside, we're at DCA's Hub, and right across the way is Carthay Circle Restaurant, modeled after the Carthay Circle Theater. The inside has a fine dining appearance, and the prices on the menu back up its initial impression. The food, however, is not worth the price. The last time I ate here was a huge letdown, but I've had good experiences in the past, so dine here at your own risk. Carthay Circle also has a lounge with a separate menu. The seating is outdoors, and you've probably seen this area before. I've never eaten here, so I can't speak to it personally, but the menu prices are much more reasonable. Both the restaurant and the lounge require advanced dining reservations. So as with any table service restaurant at Disneyland, it will require reservations and reservations can be made 60 days in advance. If you can't get a reservation for the restaurant that you want, I recommend that you sign up for alerts on mouse dining. I'm not associated with mouse dining, I just found their service to be really, really helpful. You can get like the first four alerts free, so set them up for whatever dates you need and whatever time you need and it'll send you an email whenever a reservation becomes available. Just pull the trigger quick and you'll be able to get it no problem. Next, we're going to turn left and head down Sunset Boulevard. As you're walking around Disney California Adventure, you'll come across carts like this one that sell popcorn, churros, ice cream, and more. We're not going to cover every cart, just know that they're there. As you're walking down Sunset Boulevard, you'll come across award wieners. I'm not the biggest fan of hot dogs and so this isn't my favorite place to eat at Disney California Adventure, but it is one of them. A place to eat that is, not my favorite. Seating is through the PhilharMagic entrance and around the corner. I don't have a favorite menu item, but I do want to caution you against their funnel cake fries. Every iteration has been awful, and I love funnel cake. Right next door is Schmoozies. They sell smoothies and milkshakes. I've never had their smoothies before, but I have been suckered into buying many milkshakes based on their cute themes, thinking that maybe this one will be good, only to find out it's just another mediocre milkshake. But I'm a milkshake snob, so take my opinion for what you will. If you head into Hollywoodland and turn right at Monsters, Inc., you'll come across the Hollywood Lounge. This location mostly serves alcoholic beverages and is one of the many such places around Disney California Adventure that does so. I don't cover alcohol at all here on the channel, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on these types of places. Right next to it is the Studio Catering Company. This little food truck rotates its menu quite frequently, and the seasonal empanada is literally the only thing I've ever purchased here. But check out the menu while you're here, something might stick out to you. A short jaunt away towards Guardians of the Galaxy is the Shawarma Palace 2. This is one of two locations that sells shawarmas and falafels in Avengers Campus. The other is located across from Spider-Man Web Slingers and is the exact same menu. The food here is good and I highly recommend it, especially for their vegan option. Right at the base of Guardians of the Galaxy is this little cart called Terran Treats. The item of note here is the Cosmic Cream Orb, which I've dubbed the strangest snack at Disneyland. If you'd like to see us try this item and several other odd foods, I'll put a link to that video down in the description. If you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And if you want to save money on your next Disneyland vacation, call my friends at Getaway Today and tell them that SoCal Disney Dad sent you. Or click the link down in the description and use my coupon code to save on their already discounted packages. Sequentially, as we walk around the land from here, we'll come across the Pim Tasting Lab, which once again serves mostly alcoholic beverages, though they do have a few non-alcoholic options. However, the main restaurant you should be aware of here is Pim Test Kitchen. Finally, we get to our first decent full-on quick service location at Disney California Adventure. In fact, I'd possibly dare to say that this is the best food at DCA. The not-so-little chicken sandwich is a personal favorite, but the Impossible Spoonful is yet another tasty vegan option. They used to have the most amazing snack ever, the Choco Smash Bar, but it's been recently replaced with the Choco Smash Cake, which I've yet to taste test. 
It looks pretty good though. Pimp Test Kitchen also features refillable drinks. The seating area is quite limited however, so be aware that the extra seating for this location is actually outside the restaurant and a quick walk back to the Hyperion Theater where they have a few extra tables. If they put a show back in here though, they do remove the tables. We now leave Avengers Campus behind and head towards the back entrance of Cars Land. There's two food locations here, the primary quick service being Flo's V8 Cafe. Theming here is next level and I always love to look at it. Inside you'll get 50s diner vibes and there's plenty of seating to go around. The menu though is that of a standard theme park burger restaurant and is nothing special. They do occasionally get seasonal items that I've enjoyed though, so check their menu during your visit. Be sure to sit outside so you can watch Radiator Springs Racers while you eat. Across the street is the Cozy Cone Motel, where you can meet your favorite car's characters and grab a bite to eat. There are five different cones here, and each one has their own food options. First, we have the Churro Cone, which usually sells a standard churro, as well as a seasonal churro. Cone number two is the Ice Cream Cone, and is the only place in all of the Disneyland Resort where you can find chocolate and vanilla soft serve. Next is Chili Cone Queso, which offers bread cones, and these are quite good in filling, making for a budget-friendly meal. Cone number four is Frozen Concoctions, which sells chimichangas and a few beverages. And finally, we have Popcorn, which sells flavored popcorn. Currently, they have butter, pickle, and white cheddar as their three options. That's it for Cars Land. Now we head to San Francisco Square. This is a huge dining area featuring five food and drink locations and a large amount of shared seating. The first location coming in from this direction is going to be Lucky Fortune Cookery. Since the land was rethemed, this quick service restaurant has had a complete menu change. I've had both the Yaki Udon with Karagi inspired crispy chicken, as well as the Beef Bulgogi Burrito. Both were exceptionally delicious, but I prefer the Yaki Udon. The Baymax Macaron is also delicious, but beware, it's very rich. In the middle, we have Rita's Turbine Blenders, which sells margaritas. Across from that is Ant Cass Cafe, previously Pacific Wharf Cafe. For this quick service restaurant, the name changed, but the food did not. So if you're looking for soup and a sourdough bread bowl, this is still the place to get it. And opposite both of those two restaurants is Cucina Cucamonga Mexican Grill, where the previous two restaurants have seen some alteration. Cucina Cucamonga hasn't changed at all with the switch over to San Francisco Square. My favorite food from this location is the quesabaria. It comes with two tacos and a beef broth for dipping. That's not all this area has to offer though. The Ghirardelli ice cream parlor is still here at the complete opposite end of the land. There's also more seating down this way if you're having trouble finding a table in the main dining area. Not too far away is our second table service restaurant at Disney California Adventure, and that's Wine Country Trattoria. My wife and I put off eating here for a really long time because it just seems like an Italian restaurant and it sort of is, but it's got good food and is an underrated gem in my opinion. I think this is well worth your consideration and is an easy to get dining reservation. On either side of the Wine Country Trattoria, you'll find two locations for getting alcoholic beverages, Mendocino Terrace and Sonoma Terrace. The only food item of note here for our purposes is the Bavarian pretzel at Sonoma Terrace, but it's also worth pointing out that this terrace in particular has a gorgeous seating area. If we leave this area and turn right, we'll find another hub junction of sorts. And located here, you'll find the cappuccino cart, which sells espresso, coffee, cocktails, and a few bites. The steak and egg burrito is a solid breakfast option in a park that's pretty limited with breakfast offerings. If we head up the bridge, we'll enter Pixar Pier. The first restaurant we come across is also Disney California Adventure's most popular table service restaurant, Lamplight Lounge. As such, it's also the most difficult to land a reservation. If you're having trouble, they do have a walk-up list. The boardwalk portion of the restaurant is sometimes easier to get into, but it does feature a limited menu. Even so, you can still get their popular drinks. Of course, the ones you're seeing are non-alcoholic, as well as the ever-popular lobster nachos. The view is pretty nice all around from either location. Heading towards the rides, you'll run into adorable snowman frosted treats, which also sells soft serve. But here you'll only find the lemon and mango flavors. The most popular menu item is the Pixar Pier Frosty Parfait, which features lemon soft serve on top of a blue raspberry frozen drink. We've gotten this a few times, and it's always a hit, especially on a hot day. Down next to the entrance to the Incredicoaster is a little cart that shouldn't be overlooked. The Jack Jack Cookie Num Num stand features one of the best chocolate chip cookies I've ever had. 
Well, Disney World has these too, but in my opinion, ours are better. Make sure they warm it up though, otherwise it might not quite be as good as I'm hyping it up to be. And a lot of the times when I'm filming these videos, my family goes off and does other things. And I just happened to be here right when they got off on Credit Coaster. This is like your third time riding. What did you think? <laughs> is this your new favorite ride at DCA? Yeah. <laughs> so James rode by himself today for the first time. He was a little nervous at first. However, they did pair him with a single rider. Across from Jesse's Critter Carousel is a hidden gem of a restaurant that I unfairly gave a bad review in last year's ranking video that I hope to correct this year. I assumed it was a KFC type chicken basket, but after we actually tried it, we found the drumsticks to be surprisingly good and seasoned well. To top it all off, the box it comes in is super cute. Hooray, another hot dog location. But what makes angry dogs stand out from a place like Award Wieners is that they have a hot link hot dog. If you love a little spice in your life, this is the hot dog for you. It's the only hot dog in the park that I fully recommend as it's got great flavoring and a good little kick to it. Near the end of Pixar Pier is Bing Bong's Sweet Stuff, which looks like a gift shop from the outside, but if you head inside, you'll find another bakery like Trolley Treats with most of the same stuff. But that's not all this is. It also sells specialty frozen beverages themed to the Inside Out IP. If you like Slurpees as much as I do, be sure to stop by and give one a try. As we leave Pixar Pier behind, we'll enter Paradise Gardens Park. The first location we'll point out is Bayside Brews, but again, we're not going to focus on it. The main quick service location here is Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta. This is another cafeteria style restaurant like several others over at Disneyland if you saw that video. If you missed it, I'll link to it at the end so you can keep watching. This restaurant has pizza and pasta as the name implies, but it also has salads as well. The seating here is pretty extensive and I've never had trouble finding a table. Next door is Paradise Garden Grill. This location is seasonal and almost always has food connected to whatever food festival is going on at Disney California Adventure. If you notice the sip and savor icon, this means that that food item is available in a smaller portion in exchange for a pull tab from your sip and savor pass. Speaking of food festivals, there are three throughout the year. Coming up next is the Lunar New Year Festival, which has a limited run in January and February and features delicious Chinese options. Then the big one is Food and Wine Festival for March and April. This is the premier festival that also sees the return of Soarin' Over California. And finally, there's Festival of Holidays in November and December. The rest of the year is festival free, so plan your trip accordingly for whether you plan to partake in a festival or not. As we work our way around Paradise Bay, our next quick service location is Corn Dog Castle. As with Angry Dogs, my choice of food items here is the Hot Link Corn Dog, though the standard corn dog is available as well. Seating here is extremely limited, but there's plenty of bench seating, and you don't really need a table anyway. For our last and final restaurant at Disney California Adventure, we have to walk a long way through the Grizzly Peak Recreation Area, past Soren, and practically back to the front of the park. Here we'll find Smoke Jumper's Grill. This is yet again another lackluster quick service restaurant that primarily serves burgers. The seating area is huge though, with both indoor and outdoor dining, which is a nice plus. They recently added breakfast at this location served until 10 a.m. I've tried both burritos and I think they're worth your consideration. Well, that's it for our time here today at Disney California Adventure, bringing you the ultimate food guide. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions I didn't answer, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. I am always happy to answer them. Then if you would like to see my Disneyland food guide, you can click this video to watch that now. Thanks for watching and we will see you again next time.